Okay, here in objective one, we are looking at the end behavior of polynomial functions. So we have a couple of definitions that we need to make sure we have under our belt before we proceed. They're all listed here in this top box. The first one is that the general form of a polynomial function, which would be written like this, this is showing that um, in the general form it's been fully expanded, so it's not factored, it's been distributed completely. Uh, you have x's, so variables with some exponent, potentially a coefficient in front of that variable. Um, and that they would range from some number all the way down to where your variable has an exponent of 1. And then eventually, if you notice the x has gone away, the variable has gone away, which means our variable has an exponent of 0. Uh, one thing that we do need to make sure that we know is that in the general form, the powers of these exponents are non-negative, so positive or zero, integers, meaning whole numbers. So we're looking at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. Okay? Next up, we have the degree of a polynomial. The degree is the highest exponent that you see in your general form, um, or potentially in your factored form. We will look at how to pull out the degree from the factored form, but it's the highest exponent possible within that polynomial. Okay, the leading coefficient of a polynomial is the coefficient. So we are looking at number in front of. So uh, the leading coefficient is the, of the polynomial is the coefficient or number in front of the highest degree term. And then we have the end behavior. The end behavior of a polynomial it describes the direction of f of x at the far ends of the graph. So as we look at the furthest most right and the furthest most left, what is the function doing at the furthest most right or the furthest most left? That's the end behavior. Okay, and so we've got a little bit of a guide here to help us with determining end behavior. If you are looking at a function at a polynomial and it's it has an odd degree. So remember, degree is the highest exponent in the polynomial. So if you're looking at that highest exponent and it is an odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., then you know that your function at its furthest most points, that the end behavior is going in opposite directions. If we have a positive leading coefficient, then we know that on the left, our function is going to negative infinity. On the right, our function is going to positive infinity. Okay. It's almost a little bit like slope. Uh, it's not slope, but it is kind of like that, right? We have a positive slope here because of the positive leading coefficient, kind of, sort of, roughly speaking, right? Okay, and then we have opposite uh, directions for an odd degree. If we have a negative leading coefficient, then we are on the left going to positive infinity, on the right going to negative infinity. Again, kind of, sort of, roughly speaking, like slope. Right, a negative leading coefficient, we kind of sort of have a negative slope here. Positive infinity on the left, negative on the right. Okay, now if you're looking at your polynomial and you have an even degree, then you know you're going in the same direction on both sides. Um, if we have a positive leading coefficient, then we are going up to positive infinity on both sides. If we have a negative leading coefficient, then we are going down to negative infinity on both sides. Okay? So demonstrating this, numbers one through three. We're gonna identify the leading coefficient, the degree, and the end behavior for the following. Okay, I'm gonna walk through the first one. My recommendation on the next two after that then, after we do number one together, is to pause the video, give numbers two and three a shot on your own. That way you're seeing, are you actually understanding what we are doing with degree and leading coefficient? And then you can always restart the video, you know, if you get halfway through number two and you get stuck, we'll restart the video. Right? Watch through the explanation of number two and then maybe pause the video again and try number three on your own. Or if you feel like you're able to successfully get through both numbers two and three, then restart the video, maybe fast forward to answers, double check, and that way if you got it wrong, you can hear the explanation of what is the correct answer. Um, and if you got it right, you can move on to the next part of the video with confidence. You did actually understand what we're, we're talking about here. Okay? But that means you need to pause the video. You need to give it a shot on your own. Right? Okay, number one, doing this one together. We're looking at degree, leading coefficient, and end behavior. So degree, degree again, look up that top box. A degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. As I'm looking at my function here, the one with the highest exponent is here. It has a degree of four. 
Leading coefficient, leading coefficient, looking at the box up above, the leading coefficient of a polynomial is the coefficient or number in front of the highest degree term. Well, my highest degree term was this four. The number in front of it, the coefficient, is three. So my leading coefficient is three. And then end behavior, we're looking at defining end behavior, so we're wanting to know um, what's happening on the left, what's happening on the right, Okay. Well, I have a degree of 4, which is an even degree, so I know I'm going the same direction. And a leading coefficient of 3, which is a positive leading coefficient. So because I have an even degree with a positive leading coefficient, I know my function is going to positive infinity on both the left and the right. So the left goes to positive infinity, the right goes to positive infinity. Go ahead and pause the video, give number two a shot, restart it when you're ready. Okay, number two, degree, again, looking up above, degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. In this case, as I look at my exponents, the highest exponent is five. Leading coefficient, looking up above, the leading coefficient of a polynomial is the coefficient or number in front of the highest degree term. Okay, well my highest degree term was five, so the coefficient or number in front of it is negative three. Okay, end behavior, I'm looking at what happens on the left, what happens on the right. Well, I have an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. So because I have an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient, I know on the left I'm going to positive infinity, on the right I'm going to negative infinity. Okay, go ahead and pause the video again, give number, th number three a shot. Restart it when you're ready. Okay, degree, degree, highest exponent. My highest exponent in this case is six. Leading coefficient, the coefficient in front of that highest degree. Well, here's my six, my highest degree, the number in front of it, the coefficient is negative seven. And then end behavior, what's happening on the left? What's happening on the right? Well, I have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. So with an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, I know I'm going to negative infinity on both sides. So the left goes to negative infinity, right goes to negative infinity. Okay. Which brings us to the next set of problems. We can actually pull our degree and leading coefficients from our graphs using these attributes that we see detailed here. Okay, so number four, we're looking at um, what type of degree, what type of leading coefficient, and then some sort of justification, how do you know? Okay, well degree, taking a look at this graph, I noticed that on the left, I'm going up to positive infinity, on the right, I'm going to negative infinity, that they are going opposite directions. And so since they are going in opposite directions, that tells me that I have an odd degree. Okay, leading coefficient then. Since I'm going to infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right, I see kind of that negative slope-ish idea, right? Positive infinity on the left, negative infinity on the right, that tells me I have a negative leading coefficient. And then for your justification, it's, it's how you know that you were an odd degree, how you know that we are a negative leading coefficient. And so it would be something about the fact that we are going opposite directions at our end behavior, right? And that it's positive infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right, so therefore we have a negative leading coefficient. It's exactly what your thought process was as you determined your degree and your coefficient. Okay. So that's going to be in your words. Okay, my recommendation again to pause the video, give number five a shot, restart it when you're either stuck or have an answer. Okay. 
Number five, degree. Well, I'm going down to negative infinity on both sides. They're going the same direction. So that tells me that I have an even degree. And for my leading coefficient, since I'm going down to negative infinity on both sides, that tells me that I have a negative leading coefficient. And then you would fill in your justification. Why did we know it was even? Why did we know it was negative? It's exactly what we just talked through or what you just heard me talk through. It's your thought process, though, so you need to put it in your words. Okay. Pause the video, give nip number six a, a shot on your own, restart it either when you're stuck or when you have an answer. Okay, degree, degree here. We are going up to positive infinity on both sides. It's the same direction, so that tells me I have an even degree. And since we're going up to positive infinity on both sides, that tells me I have a positive leading coefficient. and then your justification is in your own words, that rationale we just thought through. Okay. On the back side here then, number seven, we're gonna do A together. My recommendation would be to pause the video then, give B a shot on your own. Same with number eight. Okay. So A together here. We are wanting to write a polynomial function with end behavior where on the left we go to negative infinity and on the right we go to positive infinity. Okay, well you have a little diagram over here, a little graphic organizer to demonstrate what was on the front or you could flip back to the front. But at some point we do need to be able to think through this without those definitions, without that little visual demonstration. Okay, so I'm not going to turn to the front because again we need to start moving away from that. On the left, we're going to negative infinity. On the right, we're going to positive infinity. Since these are going in opposite directions, this is going to be an odd degree. And then negative infinity on the left, picture that negative on the left to positive on the right, we have kind of a, a positive slope-ish idea here. And so that tells me I am a positive leading coefficient. And so as I write out my function, that's what I need to see. I need to see an odd degree. Well, you can pick whatever odd number you want, doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna do five, because that's odd. And then your leading coefficient can be whatever you want it to be, as long as it's positive. I'm gonna do uh, 11. Okay, so we have a positive leading coefficient, an odd degree. And then everything that comes after can be whatever you want it to be because, again, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do plus 3x to the fourth. Um, I'm not even going to do an x cubed. I'm going to skip that. Let's do negative x squared plus 9x minus 7. Okay, so I'm totally just making these numbers up. Actually, a lot of those are odds. Let's do minus 8. I'm totally making these numbers up because really the only thing that matters is what happens at that highest degree. We need to have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. Everything else could be whatever you want it to be. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, give B a shot on your own, restart it when you are ready. Okay, B here. On the left we want our function to go to negative infinity, on the right we want it to go to negative infinity because they are going the same direction. We know we are in even degree. And since they are both going to negative infinity, this is a negative leading coefficient. And so again, you can make up whatever numbers you want as long as we have an, an even degree. So I'm gonna do, um, let's do x to the fourth, that's even. And you can do whatever number in front as long as it's negative. So we'll do negative five. And then you can make up whatever numbers you want. So we're gonna do plus x cubed minus, uh, actually let's just go minus 12. Yeah, we'll do minus 12x. Because again, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a negative leading coefficient and an even degree. Okay. Okay, number eight. A, we are looking at a positive leading coefficient with an even degree. 
Okay, so you have to figure out, well, what does this mean? If we have an even degree, it means we are going the same direction. And since it's a positive leading coefficient, we are going up on both sides because it's positive. So sketching a graph, as long as you see yourself going up on both ends, you can do whatever you want in the middle. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go a um, little loop here, and then we'll do another guy there. And there's my positive leading coefficient, even degree. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video. Give B a shot. We start it when you're ready. Okay? We want a negative leading coefficient and an odd degree. So odd degree tells me we are going opposite directions. And a negative leading coefficient tells me that in going opposite directions, I'm going to see kind of roughly speaking a negative slope-ish idea here. So it means we're going to positive infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right. So again, as long as you see that general m movement, you know that you have a negative leading coefficient and an odd degree. Okay. Okay, last one, nine here. We're going to do A together. Again, same thing. Pause the video. Give B a shot on your own and restart it when you are ready to check. So we are looking at determining the degree of the polynomial in factored form, and then I'm actually going to add to this finding the leading coefficient because it's going to be something you're going to want to be able to do for the next lesson. Um, so we are going to find both, even though I know the directions only say to find the degree. Okay? So first step, degree. Next step, leading coefficient. Okay, so in factored form, your degree is, well, I should, let me back up a bit. Degree, remember, is the highest exponent possible from your polynomial function. Okay, so in factored form, that means we have to kind of read into it a little bit because it's not in its fully expanded form, um, although that is how we are going to check for today, um, is by expanding it. Okay, but, but the degree, we have to read into it a little bit. So the highest possible degree would be the combination of your two factors. Because again, imagine expanding this. We would, we, or we will, end up foiling this in, right? Multiplying our terms together. And so the highest possible exponent is the one that is created by multiplying the highest possible exponents in each factor. And so in this first factor, we have an exponent of 1. And back here, this is an x to the 0 behind this 1. So we have a high, an exponent of 0. So with an exponent of 1 and an exponent of 0, what's your highest exponent? In this first factor, our highest exponent is 1. Back here, we have an exponent of 2, an exponent of 1, and again, an exponent of 0. And so the highest exponent in this second factor is 2. And then again, imagine foiling this. If we were multiplying these terms together, our highest exponent of 1 and our highest exponent of 2, what would we be doing to those exponents of 1 and 2 when we multiply? We'd be adding them, right? x times x squared is x cubed because 1 plus 2 is 3. And so same thing here. We're going to add these to get 3. And so my degree is 3. 1 and 2 more highest exponents make a final highest exponent of 3. Okay, leading coefficient. So leading coefficient, we are looking at the number in front of our highest exponent. Well, same thing here. So again, we already determined what our highest exponents were. Our highest exponent in this one was the 1. And the leading coefficient for this guy in front of it is 1. Okay, highest degree in the second term was my squared, the 2 here. And the leading coefficient, the number in front of it, is 1. Okay, well again, imagine foiling this out. What would we be doing to those leading coefficients when we multiplied the x and the x squared? 
we'd be multiplying them, right? x times x squared is x cubed because one times one is still one, and so my leading coefficient here would be one. To check this, we could FOIL this function out, or expand it, so x times x squared would be x cubed, x times negative two x would be negative two x squared, x times five is five x, negative one times x squared is negative x squared, negative one times negative two x is positive two x, and negative one times five is negative five which means that if we combined like terms, we'd have our x cubed out front, our negative two x squared and negative x squared would be negative three x squared, our positive five x and positive two x would make positive seven x, and our negative five at the back, confirming that if you look, the highest exponent we have is three, and its leading coefficient is one. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, give this next one a shot, restart it when you are ready. Okay, so degree here, degree, what are my highest exponents? Well, in this first factor, <laughs> there's only one exponent there, in this first factor, my highest exponent is four. In this second factor, of which we have two of them, right, there are two, two x plus threes here, we have an exponent of one, and an exponent of zero, so the highest exponent is one. And again, there are two of those ones because of that squared. Right, two, two x plus three, so two highest exponents of one. And then in our last factor here, we have an exponent of zero and an exponent of one, so the highest exponent is one, which brings me to a, final degree of four plus one plus one plus one, which is seven. Okay, for my leading coefficient, okay, so in front of my degree of four here, that coefficient is one. In my second term here, in front of my degree of one, we have a leading coefficient of two, and there are two of those because of that squared. And back here in front of my final degree of one, we have a leading coefficient of negative one. And so my, my leading coefficient for my polynomial is one times two times two times negative one or negative four. And again, you could check this by expanding. Okay, so if we expanded, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, distribute this x to the fourth into the four minus x. So we'd have four x to the fourth minus x to the fifth. And I'm gonna foil out this two x plus three, so we'd have four x squared plus 12 x plus nine. And then distributing it again, we'd have four x to the fourth times four x squared is 16 x to the sixth. Four x to the fourth times 12 x is 48x to the fifth, 4x to the fourth times nine, 36x to the fourth. Negative x to the fifth times 4x squared is negative 4x to the seventh. Negative x to the fifth times 12x is negative 12x to the sixth. Negative x to the fifth times nine is negative nine x to the fifth. Combining like terms, we see we have a negative 4x to the seventh. We have 16x to the sixth times, or minus 12x to the sixth, which is 4x to the sixth. 48x to the fifth minus 9x to the fifth is 39x to the fifth. And then 36x to the fourth at the back, which confirms that the highest exponent possible is seven, and its leading coefficient is negative four. And so that could be how you check your degree and your leading coefficient. Although ideally speaking, we would like to be able to, to find these without having to distribute. Um, but it's a good way to double check. Okay? And that's objective one.